Okay, now let's get to the part I want to talk about. Verse 12. This is my commandment that you love one another just as I've loved you. Greater love... <laughs> that's interesting. This is my commandment that you love one another just as I loved you. It's interesting because the context is he loved them by correcting them. That's the context here. Selah. Okay. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. That's good. You're my friends if you do what I command you. Turn to your, turn to your neighbor and say, you're God's friend if you do what he tells you to do. Verse 15. No longer do I call you slaves. No longer do I call you slaves because a slave does not know. Say this. A slave does not know what his master is doing. But I've called you friends for all things. Everybody say all things. I've heard from the Father, I've made known to you. Okay, I've shared this before, but this is, I think this is really powerful. And it's growing, this, this is a growing revelation in my own heart. He says, listen, I don't call you slaves anymore because a slave is, doesn't know what his master is doing. In other words, he equates slavery with withholding information. And he goes, I don't call you a slave because, because a slave does not know. The reason you were a slave is because I withheld information from you. And do you understand that the highest level of, uh, the, hi the highest core value in slavery is obedience. In other words, what we learn as slaves, and by the way, when you come to Christ, we all come as slaves. And the first thing we learn is that Jesus is both Savior and Lord. Lord, right? And we emphasize he's a Savior, and now he needs to be Lord. In other words, the first thing we learn, we used to be slaves to sin, and Romans 6 says now we're slaves to righteousness, so we come to Christ as a slave. And we learn how to do what we're told. In fact, Romans 8 says that if you know, anyone who's not led by the Spirit, in other words, anyone who doesn't do what the Spirit tells them, is not a son. Which is a, kind of a different way to say Hebrews 12. Anyone who, doesn't, anyone who doesn't receive discipline is not a son. And so Romans says anyone who's not led by the Spirit, anyone who doesn't do what the Spirit tells them, is not a son. So the first thing we learn and when we come to Christ, is that God is both Savior and Lord. But how many of you know that He doesn't want to just be Savior and Lord, He wants to be the bridegroom. He's looking for us to, he's looking for us to move from slavery to friendship into matrimony. And He's not wanting to marry a slave girl. And He says, listen, I don't call you slaves, because a slave doesn't know what his master's doing, but I call you friends for all things I've heard from the Father made known to you. And, and here's, uh, here's a really strong a point that I, that I think is, I, I think it's a, core, it's a core issue in the body of Christ. There's a lot of people who come to Bethel, they, come, they go to you know, different places around the earth and because they hear revelation and they're like, they leave there and like, oh my goodness, you know, the Bible opened up to me, the kingdom opened up to me and, 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 they, and the first question that, um, like Bill, I've heard Bill get asked this lots of times when we're in leaders advances or, or we're in question and answer sessions they're like where do you get all that revelation and they're expecting the answer to be well I study this many hours a day and I read these commentaries and they don't they don't hear that from him and they're like and I, I, I'd like to propose to you that that revelation is not the product of laborious study but it is the fruit of friendship with God when you're a friend with God, all things that he's heard from the Father, he's made known to us. And that revelation is actually the fruit of a changed relationship with God. And we move from slavery to friendship. We actually get stuff that no one else knows because God tells us his secrets. Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Habakkuk 2, 14, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Daniel 12, 3. I love this one. I just found this verse. Those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of the heaven. And, those, and they shall lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. And then I thought, this makes really good sense because Isaiah 60, it says, Arise and shine. Arise and shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Behold, deep darkness covers the earth, deep darkness of people, but the Lord will rise upon you. His glory will be seen upon you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Those who have insight will shine like the brightness of the stars. Those who have insight, did you get that? Those who have insight will shine like the brightness of the stars and they will lead many to righteousness. 
Arise and shine, for your light has come. What is the light that causes nations to come to you? Insight. Revelation. I just have a sense that we are going to change nations. And we're going to do it through revelation. And so the goal, when Joseph interpreted the dream and then told Pharaoh what to do about it, in my opinion, he made a mistake. He ended up enslaving a whole nation. But what would happen if we had insight and wisdom? In my opinion, Joseph made a serious mistake in enslaving the nation. He made one man rich and everyone else poor. Think about what would have happened if he simply would have told all the Egyptians. Remember, the famine was worldwide. They wouldn't have just been a first world nation. They would have been the richest first world nation on the planet because they would have been the only people in the world who had food and people from everywhere would have bought from the Egyptians. And the poorest among them would have been wealthy. What would happen? Let's see. Those who have insight will shine like the brightness of the stars. I think it's time for us to move out of slavery and into friendship. And as we do, we can disciple nations. I think that our relationship, as if we can grow out of this immature place of slavery and grow into friendship, I think that we can actually lead nations to Christ. What if that's supposed to happen in our day? And in our day, we begin to make friends with God, and God tells us His secrets, and we have influence with Him, and all things we've heard from the Father, He's made known to us, and He says, ask whatever you want, and I'll give it to you. And I go, hey, I'd like to have that nation. I'd like to have the nation of Haiti. How's that? You're gonna get, I will give you the nations as your inheritance. And instead of asking for cars and, 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 for, and for you know nice stuff, and for, that's all good, that's all good. But how would you like to be the owner of a nation? Would you, rather have, would you rather have a Rolls Royce or would you rather have America? God said, I'll give you the nations as your inheritance. Ask of me and I will give you the nations as an inheritance. Those who have insight will shine brightly like the stars. They'll lead many to righteousness. I think we're just one thought away from, a, from a, a, revo- a revolution. I mean it. I have a sense that we're just, we're just one thought away from a revolution. We're just one thought away from curing cancer. We're just one thought away from curing multiple scores. We're just one thought away from curing diseases. We're one thought away from curing the health care program. But to have those kind of thoughts, we need to change relationships with God. And to have changed relationships with God, we got to get past just doing what we're told. Listen, as long as a lot of people want to move into friendship, but they still haven't got to the place where they can do what God tells them to do. And do you understand, until you can do what God tells you to do, He's not going to let you be a friend where He tells you His secrets. There is a place beyond obedience. There is a place beyond obedience. You know, if I tell my son, cut the lawn, you know, he's 15, I say, cut the lawn and, and take out the garbage, and he cuts the lawn and takes out the garbage, well, first of all, that would be a miracle. <laughs> I don't ever remember that happening. But, so, if, if I tell my son, cut the lawn and take out the garbage, and he cuts the lawn and takes out the garbage, that's good, he's obedient. But what would happen if I come home one day, and I didn't tell him to do anything, and he cuts the lawn, takes out the garbage, and washes the car? I mean, would I go, hey, do what you're told, boy. I never told you to do that. No, first of all, I'd fall down and say, how much money do you need? <laughs> Let me guess, you found a girlfriend, you want to go out. What's, what's wrong? No, sincerely, do you understand that there's a place beyond obedience? What happens when I capture the heart of God is I no longer need to be told what to do because I have his heart and I do it because I love him, not because I'm a slave. What happens when I move from slavery to friendship is God can trust me because the intentions of my heart, I'm after God's heart. And so now I can move into the next level. I'm not doing what I'm told. I'm doing beyond what I'm told because I've caught the vision. I've captured his heart and I'm moved by and I'm motivated by love and compassion. I mean, some of us think like, you know, I'm being led by the Spirit is the highest level of life. Listen, if we're not led by the Spirit, we're not sons of God. But that's not the highest level of life. He gave us a new mind and a new heart, and He's waiting for us to actually use it. And as we do, we get to move into a new relationship with God. 